Okay. Well, first of all, let me welcome everyone who is here. Thank you so very much for coming to this highly anticipated talk uh, with our dear friend, Yusra Fertichi. Um, she is actually one of our superstars, so we are in for a treat today. She is coming to us from Tunisia, and she has worked, she's, she wears many, many hats, far too many for me to uh, tell you about here, but a few of the things that she does, she is with higher education, teacher training, she does a lot of teacher training, also very interestingly, yoga and mindfulness coach. And many of you know her as the host of the Ikigai and Kaizen podcasts. And so I would like to tell you that she's going to talk about transformation coaching. And she is presenting today with another dear, dear colleague, um, who is they will be doing a coaching demonstration and i'd like to introduce to you dr walid chalky who also has such a big background that i couldn't i would spend the entire podcast telling you about him so he has done such extensive work with elt and teacher training authored a book on blended learning, published numerous papers and presented at international conferences and does conduct a lot of workshops on ELT and innovative teaching methodologies. And I'm going to turn it over now so that we have plenty of time to uh, Yusra Farchichi who will tell you a little bit more about um, Dr. Shaki and what they will present today. So it's all yours Yusra, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Linda, the team, and our esteemed guests. Thank you for being here today with us. So today's presentation will be about how coaching can transform one's life. At first, I'll be explaining what is coaching, because there are a lot of misconceptions, and I'll be clarifying what is not coaching. And um, I'll be exploring some technical uh, concepts with coaching. And uh, last but not least, my colleague, uh, Dr. Walid, is here for us to conduct a simulation and a demonstration of how a coaching session, according to the ICF uh, Code of Ethics, how a session goes on with those uh, criteria. So Walid will be here to, to talk about, so um, to maybe think about uh, in a deeper sense about one of his goals. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen and then I'll explain um, a little bit um, agenda for today. So can you see my screen, please? Is it? Yes. Busy? Yeah. Right. Thank you. So the title of the, today's presentation is, it's entitled Transformative Coaching in the Era of AI. So a lot of people have been talking about the effect of coaching. And as I said, I'll be mentioning all of that, but with a little bit of touch from AI. And thank you again for the CPDPLN for hosting today's webinar that I think will be useful to many colleagues around the world. So as I said, I'll explain what is coaching and what's not. I'll explain what's the coach mindset. So if, if we say that someone is a coach, what are the different criteria that someone should really uh, be embodying as a coach? And then uh, I'll be talking about coaching in a particular sense for career path development. I'll be talking about smart goals. And then finally, I'll add a little bit of touch of technology with AI in coaching that will um, I will share with you something that you explore uh, with me together in coaching. And last but not least, as I said, a demo for, the, uh, let's say, an exemplary coaching session. So a little bit of me, just like my colleague Linda introduced me. So I am a prospective PhD candidate in linguistics. I do what we call digital humanities, and I blend this with call AS. Uh, let's say computer assisted language learning as well. I'm CELTA qualified and um, also a diesel trainer. So I teach at a higher institution um, um, at a university in Tunisia. And also I had the idea of starting the Ikigai and Kaizen podcast that I host uh, since 2023 until now. And with this, I integrate a little bit of some touches of coaching and storytelling techniques into this podcast. So 
before starting to talk about those theoretical aspects, you know, and, uh, you know, talking, like, let's say too much about what is coaching and what is not coaching. So first, I'm going to take you with me in a journey, let's say in a trip, if you allow me to. If you agree, you can follow up with the present, let's say the video that I'll be displaying in the background. If you don't grant the permission to do this, you can just follow. Feel free to really um, rewind from any activity that you do and follow up with me. If not, I will absolutely understand, okay? So we'll start with a short visualization exercise. And I'll ask you a question to everybody. When was the last time you went out for a walk? You don't have necessarily to answer this question. Okay. Was it today? Was it yesterday? Maybe you consider going out later after, after the day's webinar. So I'm going to take you with me in this journey. Imagine now, you can close your eyes if you want, that you are in a green space, an open space, and that you are floating. You're free from any judgments, from any social constraints, from any thoughts, just you and nature. Feel free to take a deep breath in to the count of four. And then exhale to the count of four. You can do this again with me. So we'll do like a body scan. Inhale. And then exhale. So I'm going to take you a little bit with me to this morning. Whatever you are in the world, let's say, if you are in Africa, just like me, North Africa, or you live in the US, or you're based in Asia, try to imagine how did your day start? How was it? Do you usually commute to work? Do you usually walk on foot to university, let's say, to the place where you work? Now, can you remember the faces of the people that you see, you would have seen this morning? What do they look like? Were they happy? Were they really satisfied maybe with their day? Going to work really with enthusiasm? Or maybe just going as if that's a burden. So now I'd like you to think about yourself. How did you start your day? Let's say in some cases, like my friends in here, um, we have friends who teach now in the Gulf. So let's say Sunday is the equivalent of Monday to us. Imagine getting to the class, talking to your students. How was your lesson today? Was it something you're you're proud of? Was it something you really you did your best to prepare it? Think about your colleagues, your students, everybody that you interacted with today. And now I'm going to take you a little bit, fast forward a little bit to the future and imagine your future self, let's say, a year from now, maybe two years, three years, it's up to you to decide when would your future self be revealed to you. What do you imagine yourself doing with that future life? Would you be still teaching? Would you maybe blend teaching with something else? Or maybe simply enjoying life, you know? Think about the modality, would you be teaching online? Would you be teaching in person? So I'll let you take this walk through a little bit in your mind, try to imagine how would your future self would be. And now, while visualizing this future self, 
try to capture a moment or two that you consider will make you very happy if you achieve them. One or two goals. Be it having more time with your family, be it starting your own business, be it starting your first course online, or maybe relocate to a new country. It's up to you to decide what would be your next goal. And then take a deep breath into the count of four. And then you exhale to the count of four as well. And now, once you feel ready, you can open your eyes. Welcome back to reality. Welcome back to the present moment. Now, as you can see on the screen, there are a few questions that you see there. These are some reflection questions that go together with the visualization exercise. So you can think out loud about this, you can type it in the chat, you can interact. So feel free to share with us what you think about the first question. Is there any goal that you want to achieve on a short run or long run? Is there something you particularly thought of while meditating? If yes, when do you think you can achieve this? Is it time bound? Is it like just something you dream about? It's up to you to decide. The third question, are there any challenges that you esteem are preventing you from achieving these goals or one goal if it's one goal? Do you think there are barriers? There are things that prevent you from going towards that future self you always imagine being? becoming and then if those barriers disappear nothing you just float just like at the beginning of the video and you're just free from all those barriers how would you achieve that goal so let's check some answers i can see in the chat i'll be teaching but not learners i visualize myself as a subject advisor thinking thank you for sharing your ideas, uh, Martina, thank you so much. So, what else? Let's see. Oh, Beatrix, short run, finishing some articles, long run, find a job abroad. Oh, Beatrix, that's, that's very, very representative of you. <laughs> and maybe Beatrix, you know, um, just um, be my guest for the Ikigai podcast. I'm still waiting for you. <laughs> Absolutely, with pleasure, with pleasure, Yusta. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, so for our colleagues, please feel free to think about your goal all through this, this presentation, today's presentation. And then, as we said, so your goal, if you don't set it, a plan to it, will be just a dream. How many times you've heard about this quote, let's say? If you don't put action into it, sometimes a goal will just remains, you know, it remains a dream. So we all know what are SMART goals, of course. So just a quick reminder about SMART goals. So the more specific they are, if you know what you want, you can achieve it in the least time possible. Measurable, you can measure your progress. And so that you know, for instance, if it's an article, if you complete the article, you start from scratch, you chalk it up until you finish the whole article and you submit. So attainable, we have to make sure that it's something really that you could, can attain, that you, it's a target that you, it's really within your capacity and relevant, of course, to who? Relevant to you. It does not have necessarily to be relevant to others because it's all about you, it's your life. And time bound, of course, so that you can evaluate your progress and for procrastinators like myself to keep it really within time limits. So let's see some of the answers here. 
using AI in the classroom, of course, we're going to see today how I'm going to use AI in coaching and you might really apply this to your students if you want. Great. So now let's check this together. And I'm really curious to know from colleagues here present with us today, what are some of the challenges that you face as a teacher on a daily basis? First, if there are any challenges. So let's, let's assume that we do have challenges. So we can see some, you know, hints on the photo. Let's see here, lack of electricity, uh, disruptive learners, what else? I can add to this teacher burnout, multitasking, you know, we have to be really uh, completing many tasks, as you see on the photo on the left side. And sometimes it, it's really risky on our mental health. So if we don't manage this very well. So let's see some of the answers in the chat. Time management. Yes. Very good. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing your ideas, my friends in the chat. So, and now what do you think can be some of the solutions to really get out of that zone, you know, the let's say the, um, the exhausting zone, let's call it this way. Are there any solutions maybe to juggle between all that? Well-being, mental health, work, research, family life. Love life for those who really are in relationships or those who are married or those who are not or those who decided maybe not to get married. <laughs> so how can you juggle between all of that? So have you ever thought about solutions maybe to enjoy being yourself more of that? Let's say if that circle would be a pie chart, how much time or maybe percentage would you be given to each section of that? Try to think about this for a while. All right. So as I've mentioned at the beginning, today's session will be about coaching. And what I mean by coaching is really something really powerful. Uh, and uh, I will provide you with my own definition of coaching and I will ask you for yours, of course. Coaching for me is unlocking possibilities. It's like those dark chambers in yourself that you don't even know. And uh, it helps, it helped me uh, to start with, uh, discover myself and discover my friends and improve my relationships with others as well. So we do coaching for what we call coaching for excellence. It's not like just the coach knows better than the others or the expert in the field or the center of the universe. No, the coach is someone who partners with the coachee, the client, towards achieving the client's goal. So the coach will be like a facilitator, just like we teachers are facilitators. We're going to see to what extent. So coaching for excellence, as I mentioned, should go for everybody, not only teachers, for students, for admin, for stakeholders, everybody should be coached. But first, what is coaching? So this is my own definition. I'll provide you with two definitions because I don't like really closing up and defining things, you know, um, in a formal way. But I will try to present to you two of my definitions to what is coaching. Coaching is a journey. First, you are onboarded. Then you take off towards your desired destination. So the transformation journey happens in the middle whether with training, with coaching. So it depends on your choice. It's the client's choice always. And then once you land, usually you land as a different person. A different person in the sense, similar to the butterflies, you know, transformation journey. So there are different stages where you cocoon a little bit. You learn you reflect on your learning experience until you can spread your wings and fly. 
To start with, I'm going to define coaching according to the ICF standards, as I mentioned in the beginning. And uh, because today's webinar is aligned with the ICF code of ethics and ICF code of competencies. So coaching is defined by ICF is a partnering, a partnership with clients in a thought provoking and creative process. It's based on a series of questions and thought provoking questions like we're going to see with, uh, with a demonstration later on. And it inspires the client to see maybe sides of themselves they were not aware of at the beginning. So, and the process is meant to unlock those previously untapped sources of imagination, productivity, and leadership. So, first, I've, I've talked about what is coaching. And um, I'm curious to know before going to the next part, um, what do you know about coaching? So, if you can type in the chat, that will be amazing. So, so what we're going to do today, it's not language coaching, it's not neural language coaching, it's something really called core um, clear coaching. It's the essential one, pure coaching. So, yes, we have some answers here that are different kinds of coaches. Yes, exactly. Yeah, also, hello, Khan. <laughs> yes, we do have the coaches. Every time that I say that I'm a coach, you tell you the people that ask me, what kind of coach are you? <laughs> do, you do you play football? No, so it's always confused with, uh, with um, you know, with a football and a soccer game. So coaching in this sense is different, and we're going to see together to what extent it's different. So as you see, there are three different parts. So the first part, to explain what is coaching as a collaborative process, as we talked about. But a lot of people always and also tend to confuse it with mentoring. I've been a mentee myself with the CLIMB program with the CPGPLN. And the CLIMB program was mentee oriented. So it's very close to what is coaching actually, because in the, in the CLIMB program, I set my own objectives. And I was uh, mentored at that time, but by Ms. Emira Salama, that I say hi, if Emira is watching me now. So every time that we talked together, she was asking me what kind of goals you said you want to achieve. And even with um, you know, the paperwork that was shared with me at that time, I was reflecting on my goals and I was working towards achieving them. But today we're going to see how different it can be from real, from the coaching experience itself. And it's different also from training, because with training, uh, something occurs in training, which is a transfer skills. It's like, you know something, you're the expert in the field, and you share that with the person who's learning this. So coaching is not like that at all. It's different. Also, a lot of people tend to confuse coaching with psychotherapy and, and consulting, so it's not. We don't dig back and go back to traumas and past experiences in coaching. On the contrary, we tend to build what is present and future. So as you've noticed, I've talked about um, in, even in the visualization exercises about future selves. How do you see yourself in the future? So coaching is not psychotherapy. So I've collected some of the words, you know, in a word cloud for you, and I'll be checking some of the words here in the chat before moving to the demo. And we can see that some of the colleagues here typed, yes, 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 coaches, is someone supported and encouraged? Yes, it's very supportive. Thank you, thank you for this uh, definition. So please feel free in the meantime to type in the chat your own definition of what you think is coaching. So most of all, it's the growth the client's growth, personal growth, collective growth, everybody's, you know, um, uh, it, it maximizes everybody's potential. So I've talked about mindsets a lot. For those who attended my previous presentations about shifting mindsets, in the TESOL Syria last year, I talked about shifting mindsets. This time I'll be talking about a coach mindset. And what is a coach mindset? So just like some of you here, some of my colleagues mentioned the football, uh, you know, coach. The football coach never plays in the game. They watch from afar. So here, 
the coach mindset, the coach himself or herself, they should embody that mindset. It, it's like you can't coach someone if you're, you don't embody that mindset. And this mindset is really, you should be open-minded, curious to know more, have that flexible mindset, be really uh, an active listener, and uh, always and forever client-centered. It's not like you coach and you maybe you should never give your advice. It's like your personal experience is different from your client's experience because everybody is responsible for their own choice. So, and here maybe you will um, identify some of the features that we all know. It's like the teacher coach, the teacher educator. So this is kind of a, a comparison that I set, sorry, between both of them. And quickly in a nutshell, because I want to give time to the demonstration today more, more than the theoretical aspects. So coaching and training, let's start with training, then coaching. The primary focus for training is like future teachers. But for coaching, it's much more inclusive. It's like current and future ones. And methodology, it's very, very structured when it comes to training. But for coaching, it's very adaptive, collaborative, personalized. It's not like you get with a scenario ready-made and you just apply it one size fits all to everybody. The interaction style is like um, when you train people, it's like you have uh, materials you prepare, you have the workshops, you have, you know, that set, um, um, but it's collaborative as well. But in coaching, it's, it's a cozier experience. It's, let's say, a two-way dialogue, reflective, thought-provoking. And um, here I have to uh, make sure I really mention this, that coaching is really confidential. It's like whatever a client says to a coach stays there. It's like uh, the client, the coach has not the right to reveal any of the, nothing from the conversation uh, uh, for, with, the, with the client to anybody, even if it's a sponsored coaching uh, experience. Sometimes your boss asks you to be coached and he sponsors that for you. Even your boss do not have access to that. Maybe they can track the progress with the coach, but not the process itself. So really quickly, I'm just going to mention what is important in all of this. The client, most of all, works on something that we call all of us the action plan. It's the client that sets the action plan and executes the action plan. And the coach is just there to facilitate the whole experience, to, to maximize existing skills and maybe unlock new ones. So I'm going to really display here on the screen a few scenarios before moving on to the demo. And um, can you try to guess the first scenario? Is it coaching? Is it training? Or is it mentoring? Let's see. What changes would you like to make in the way you approach leadership to create the impact you're aiming for? The client says, I think I need to delegate more and trust my team, but I'm not sure how to start. So here... The expert asks an open-ended question to facilitate self-discovery. So self-discovery is key. What do you think? Please, in the chat if you can. Coaching, mentoring, or what do you think? Or training. Mentoring, no concept. Okay, let's see one more answer. So coaching. All right, so I'm going to reveal the answer. It's coaching. And according to the ICF standards, as I have mentioned, because here the, the expert asks open-ended questions. And here you will see when I'll be asking Walid, all of the questions, they should be open-ended questions. So here, uh, facilitating self-discovery. So it's... If we go back here, what changes would you like to make in the way you approach leadership? It's not about how leadership should be approached. Okay, a second scenario before we move on quickly. When I was in your position, I found that learning how to manage conflicts with senior management was crucial. Have you considered this approach? The client says I haven't, but I can see how that could be really beneficial for me. Do you think this is coaching, mentoring? or training. Mm 
do some answers in the chat. So we have coaching, training. What makes you think it's a coach and what makes you think it's a training? I'm curious to know. Can you please uh, type in the chat? It's a close question. Great. And here, the expert is using a personal pronoun. You know, I was. When I was in your position, it's like positioning oneself as the expert. Okay? The know-it-all person. Good. So let's see here. It's mentoring. Okay? Scenario. Because here, there's a transfer of skills. She has personal experience and offers advice. Okay, so the rest of them, I'm really ready to share them with you if you want. Uh, for those who will be getting in touch about the scenarios, I can share this. And I'm just going to fast forward a little bit because I want you to attend today's demo. And uh, before that, I'll explain a little bit some of the ethics um, that you will observe in today's session. So coaching and the values according to ICF should be professionalism, collaboration, humanity, and equity. So here, first and foremost, clients should feel safe. It's a safe place because if they don't feel safe, they won't be really uh, getting that um, story they have, those limiting beliefs. So... And uh, some of the core competencies that coaches should have, as I mentioned, the mindset. Uh, the agreement happened together with me, with Willie, before today's session. So usually if you're a coach, so everything is really, you, you prepare the stage before the session. Uh, you will see, I've talked about trust and safety, also active listening. And um, there are what we call those aha moments. So evoking awareness to facilitate the client's growth, first and foremost. So this exercise, I'll keep it maybe, maybe if you want, you know what we're going to do while I'll be conducting the demo session with Willit. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this if you want. It's called the Wheel of Life. And we're going to score this. Uh, it's a scale from one to 10. And you can evaluate, you know, the different aspects about your life in the meantime. So at, depending, you know, uh, on the uh, goal that we lead, we'll, we'll be tackling today. So, or maybe if you just, um, I'll, I'll download it and I'll upload uh, maybe here in the chat, a photo of what we call the wheel of life. And uh, it's a self-assessment tool that we use it in coaching a lot. To know to, to what extent you have a harmonized and balanced life. So I'm going to use some of these um, coaching tools, coaching models. Uh, one of them is what we call the GROW model. So we set the goal. Um, I get back to the reality. You know, I, I ask the client a lot of questions to know more about the person himself, not about the story. And the client discovers kind of different options they have. And at the end of the session, they have that willpower to start really working on that objective. So to wrap up at the end, so the cornerstones that should be there in, in, in coaching, and you will notice this, creativity. You will see a lot of style, creative style in this. So I don't want to be specific now, but you will notice this later on and your feedback is really appreciated afterwards. So it's like a dancing in the flow at the moment with the client and uh, the focus only on the person. So it's not about the story. It's not about the family of the person. It's none of that. It's only the person's growth and personal growth. And of course, that evokes transformation. So this is another model uh, in which we explore all of that and then we review and go back to the beginning, okay? So before going on to um, the demo uh, session or the simulation, let's say to the coaching session, I invite you to scan this QR code and test uh, an AI chatbot that I use most of the time, not always, sometimes to uh, with my clients that they have they can keep up with their goals with this AI chatbot. So please feel free to scan this. Sorry. Feel free to scan this. And if you want to try it, that would be amazing. And I'll be looking forward to your feedback. 
So I have screenshot a few, I have taken a few screenshots about um, some discussions that I had with this chatbot. So first I've asked this chatbot that I have created, how, how do you usually work? So, uh, and I've trained this chatbot in the sense to, uh, to act as if it's a co-assistant to me. And um, I've even asked this chatbot, can you act like a coach please? So as if I was a client, so he said, I certainly uh, can provide guidance and support, but can never replace a personal capacity, okay? So here AI being really um, aware of that. So, and then later on, last but not least, so if you want your coaching session to start with this AI chatbot, you can prompt it as such. So you can uh, say to the chatbot, let's start our coaching session. And then the chatbot will really start immediately acting as your um, co uh, coach, let's say. So it will display for you a series of reflection questions, and then you share your thoughts in exchange with the chatbot. And here, an important issue is uh, an issue about um, um, privacy, you know, because everything should be kept uh, confidential and private. So here, um, it's like within those uh, uh, limits. So quickly now, um, uh, I will just fast, fast forward and uh, introduce you to one of the projects that I worked uh, on and I have introduced and I blended because we can blend coaching and something else. So we call it blended coaching. I blended coaching with podcasting in my Ikigai podcast. And these are some of my guests. So as you can see, maybe you can recognize some familiar faces, people you know. And this is also the Kaizen experience. And this is the Ikigai and Kaizen. I've, I've blended both of them finally in one podcast. And um, the surprise guest upcoming, uh, she's an artist, uh, someone that I really admire as much as I admire all my uh, colleagues that I hosted in this podcast. Now it's time for our demo uh, session with my colleague, Dr. Walid. So thank you so much for following up with this. So now uh, I'll introduce Dr. Walid to my colleagues. So Walid, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Yusta, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you, Walid. So uh, if you can, please, uh, whoever is um, please managing Zoom, if you can pin uh, Walid and I in, in, um, in, in, on Zoom just to see uh, our screens together. All right, thank you so much. And let's start, Walid, if you're ready. I'm ready. Thank you so much, Walid. Thank you, Walid. So hello, Walid. How are you? Hello, Isra. I'm good, alhamdulillah. How about you? Everything's good. Thanks for I'm the fine. nice introduction. It was enjoyable. Thank you so much, Walid. And I will introduce you in a nutshell to whoever joined us now. So Walid is an experienced TESO professional. He is Egyptian, he's based in Oman. And Dr. Walid, you know, is beyond, um, you know, what a, my introduction, you know. So uh, feel free to reach out to Walid anytime. And uh, I'm so glad to have you, Walid, with, with me today in, in today's session. So uh, if you're ready, Walid, we can start. Yes, I'm ready. You can start. Go ahead. Great, Walid. So, uh, Walid, I'm glad really to have you today with me in today's session, and uh, I'll be really uh, delighted to facilitate this experience with you. So, I will start first by explaining the difference between coaching, mentoring, and training. The session today will be basically a coaching session. It's not going to be a training, neither psychotherapy, so we're not going to get back in the past. So we're going to explore more of your present self and your future self. And uh, be sure, thank you so much, be sure about uh, confidentiality because whatever you'll be saying, Walid, is going to stay here. <laughs> Normally, <laughs> it's like between two people, but everybody knows. <laughs> we stay online this time. <laughs> yes, online and on YouTube, that's it. <laughs> All right. So if you're okay. ready, Walid, I invite you to, uh, um, to think about and maybe start with by mentioning what is the objective that you want to talk about today? Well, I'm, um, I've been working in the field of education for like, I would say, 24 years. I graduated in 2000 from 
the Faculty of Education English Department at Azhar University in Egypt. And I've been in this field for long enough, and I think I've worked enough for so many institutions, universities, and colleges. And I think it's time for me to, to start my own business. I, I had I had an experience before, uh, you know, having my own business that was in 2005 in back in Egypt. Uh, I, I had a, a small language training center. I was really doing well at that time, but then I had to fly to the UK to do my master's degree and I left it with a partner. And unfortunately, you know, the business didn't go well while I was away. So by the time I came back from the UK, it was uh, almost closed. So I'm, I'm thinking now of, you know, starting something maybe bigger this time, more professional, more blended. So, uh, you know, better in, you know, more modern, okay, adapting new technologies and training and um, language teaching. All right. So if I understood well, Walid, what you said, so you're interested more into starting your own business. Yes. And uh, exactly. it's a, more of a brick and mortar one and not an online business. Correct me yes. if I'm wrong, please. And, yeah, uh, no, it's not, it's not in online. It's going to be blended. So blended. we have our own. And at the same time, we can provide online services. All right, great, Walid. So what's the importance of this goal uh, in your life, Walid? I think it's um, it's vital for me to move to the next stage of my life. Uh, first of all, I would like to go back to Egypt. I've been away from, from Egypt for so many years now. I worked in Saudi Arabia for three years, and then I worked in Cambridge for three years, and then now I'm in Oman for two years. Uh, so it, it it has been, you know, a very long time away. I, I go back to Egypt very often, like every couple of months. But uh, I think it's time to go back and start working on my own. Like, I don't have to uh, attend classes at a specific time. You know, uh, I won't have to leave work. I won't have I won't have to do anything. I will I will be motivated to do my own business, to provide the service that I would like to provide. I would like to think of the benefit of the customer rather than collecting money in, in many of the institutions that I've been working in, uh, especially these private ones. Uh, their main priority is, is making money. Uh, but I'm thinking of, yes, making money is important to, to, to get your business going, but the service that you provide, the, 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 the goal that you would like to achieve, the, the uh, educational, the spiritual, the, the, uh, I would say the life goal is to educate people is, is more important to me. Uh, Walid, you've talked about uh, benefits to clients. What kind of benefits can your project bring forth to clients? Well, most of my clients for the last, like I would say 10, yeah, like 10, 12 years, I've been in the field of teacher training. I, I was serving as the head of professional development at King Abdulaziz University and then an educational consultant and teacher trainer for Cambridge University. And now I'm uh, heading the program here. So uh, I think, uh, you know, most of my career, it's either teaching students language, okay, providing them with English language uh, for their career uh, and for their higher studies. The other way is providing teacher training, English language teacher trainers. So, uh, yeah, I think this is these are the two paths that I would like to focus on. Right. Students who would like to complete their higher studies, maybe they would like to travel, maybe they they are looking forward to get um, uh, CELTA or maybe you know TESOL or you know um, uh, IELTS. Student so for students who would like to get IELTS, maybe many I, I see many people who would like to get it for to travel abroad and to do their masters or even to live and work, to migrate, so. All right, Walid, just as a, a permission, please, do you allow me to take notes? Because this will help me follow up with um, some of the ideas you mentioned. Sure, would that be shared? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'll share them with you after, of course. With everyone as well? No, 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 just with you. <laughs> Come on, Walid. <laughs> Did I share the previous ones with everybody? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, no. All right, so what is exactly the goal, Willie, that you want to work on today? Let's say from today's session, 
what would be a takeaway that is um, that will satisfy you by the end of today's session? Exactly. Um, just as you mentioned, if you haven't started acting for your uh, future dream, it stays as a dream. It never becomes a plan. So I would like to come out of the session today with a specific uh, measurable plan with clear stages, timed stages, and uh, a clear plan to saying, for example, within two, three years, my business will start. What is the first stage? What's the second stage? How long should I take for each one of them? And then start maybe taking notes of these. I might also just start taking notes. And then uh, would you allow me to take notes, Yusra? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> It's your space, Walid. It's your personal space. So feel free to take notes if you want to. Local notes or written ones. So feel free to do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I started mine already. Okay, Walid. So I'll wait for you till you. Can I yeah. pass you my pen okay. from there? Okay, you have sure. your pen. Right. Great. Yeah. <laughs> so, Walid, yes. uh, talking about your plan and your future business. So, why, Willid, until now you didn't start uh, your business, let's say, are there any barriers? Are there any challenges that you faced that have prevented you from doing, from, let's say, executing this idea until today? Um, I would say my, my previous experience, you know, in, in business, although it was very successful when I was there, when I was still in, in, in the management before I traveled, before I leave the place, uh, it was really successful and i mean the uh, the outcomes that we got during the first year of the business was unbelievable at that time and then uh, the, the the quick failure that happened after this was really threatening to me and when i was talking to my colleagues who were in egypt at that time and i was asking them what's happening why are we losing money they said why, why are we losing clients they were saying that we could not get qualified teachers as good as you after you left this is one thing so uh, uh, and other things you know uh, things related to management I think uh, they had some management issues but I believe that my biggest issue now is to start and to take the first step is being away from Egypt and this is number one number two is uh, time uh, I've been involved in so many things in the college. Uh, I am coordinating, I'm teaching, I'm, you know, uh, creating all different types of assessment, formative and summative assessments. I'm working on two different research uh, researches. I'm also, uh, you know, doing some training programs, working and, you know, providing sessions and conferences here and there. So it's, it's, there's so many things going on at the same time that usually does not allow me to stop, pause and think and focus on, on my target. So I need I need to, to have this pause and then say to myself, okay, stop here, focus on this, start with a plan, stage your plan and then go ahead unless you will continue doing the same thing forever. So you mentioned uh, a criteria, which is time we need. What's yeah. the importance yeah. of time to Walid? If ever you uh, qualify time, how would you define it, Walid? Time is, is life. Time is the space that we have. Time is everything we do in our life. Uh, time is involved in, in our work, in our personal space, with, with our family, uh, in our plans. It's, it's, it's everything. Um, I don't know. I mean, if we can define, I give a specific definition of time, but I would say it's it's life. It is the minutes and seconds that both you know pass through our life. So it's 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 every second in in our life what we are doing, what we are getting out of it, and what are we planning to do in the next one, and whether we are happy, enjoying it or not, and. How are we going to change this for the better, of course? Oh, well, thank you for sharing, Walid. Now, if I ask you, Walid, you mentioned uh, many activities, many things that you do in, let's say, every day. 
um, you mentioned research, you mentioned uh, teacher training. So if ever we need, um, you can draw if you want, if you have a piece of paper still in a, a pen. Yeah. If you draw, let's say, a circle and you try mm -hmm. to kind of divide um, the diff, let's say, mention the different things that you do during the day, during the week, during the month. So the things that you need your time for. And then can you attribute to each one of those uh, activities uh, how much time do you usually spend on those uh, activities you do? And uh, yes, please go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Well, for sure. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. Finish your question. Sorry. The last thing is that if ever you'll be devoting some time to the idea of your project or starting your project, where would you include that? And how much time would you be devoting to that? So I'll let you work on this if, with you. If, if I'm going, I, I've already created a circle on my notes. So uh, I would start with usually work comes first, unfortunately. Uh, and then I would say research, uh, family. I think family should come first. I'm I'm I, I'm not actually prioritizing my life things wisely. Um, I think my family should come first, but it, it's it's now third. Uh, I may need to change this for for the project and for my personal personal. Uh, I I'm thinking also about health. You know looking after myself, like going to the gym often, which I haven't been for so long. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and and this plan, this future plan, I would say that starting my own business, if I'm going to give uh, the, the project according to its priority or its importance, I would give it like 15 to 20% uh, of my time. Or this is ideally what it should be. And uh, how would you qualify those fifteen to twenty uh, percent of minutes? Did you mention percent? Percent. How would you qualify yeah. this in terms of hours, days? I would say like uh, one hour, or maybe one hour from one to two hours a day maximum. Uh, I think two hours would be a lot uh, because because of my busy schedule. So, I mean, maybe one to one half hours a day. Uh, I might need to dedicate like a specific time every day, like from seven to eight. Hopefully nothing pops up in the middle and then ruins my plan. <laughs> so, so it's something, you know, every day from seven to eight or from eight to nine, I, would, I need to be focusing on this, holding wow. a piece of paper and a pen and, and writing what is my next step and what I need to plan to, to get there or what what do I need to get there imagine those challenges that you have you know those distractors you have them now on your desk what yeah. would you take away from that desk kind of to uh, lighten up the view um, be it Whatever you're going to take will be a challenge, let's say, a barrier towards it, uh, achieving your goal. Let's say uh, distractors. What, what can you take off from that desk? And Maybe imagine... social media. The, okay, time let's start with... <laughs> the time I sometimes spend on social media. Uh, like I, I, I don't spend a lot on social media, but uh, but maybe this 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 is I could see that. I don't usually say it's a waste of time, but it is because I, I get old in my news. I'm, I'm very interested in, you know, learning about what happens in the world. So I always follow the news and social media. So uh, maybe I might need to reduce this because they sometimes frustrate me, ruin my day, I would say. Like when I start my day in the morning watching what's happening in Palestine, for example, it, it usually makes me uh, sad throughout the day. So I might need to reduce this. Uh, apart from this, I, I can't. I can't reduce anything. I can't reduce. I might limit working to working hours. So when I'm in college, so this is this is what I need to be doing at at, at college. Before I leave, I have to leave everything. So 
So I should not bring my college laptop home, which I bring it every day. So <laughs> I need to leave it at home and I, start, I need to use my personal laptop here. Uh, this is one thing. Um, research is difficult because it's, I don't have, it, there is no limited time. Research usually takes a huge amount of time. You have to read and search and then keep going and coming and writing and editing. Um, family, um, I can't, the, the time they get actually is, is already reduced. So I can't reduce, I need to expand it, I need to get it more. Um, <laughs> uh, Health and sport, again, this is something that I might need to give more, not less. Yes, so it's on work. I'm taking <laughs> from work and, and social media. That's it. This is the only two things I can reduce. <laughs> All right. And if, we need, you're going to replace that, you add things that you consider as valuable and they can help you in the process towards achieving your goal. What can you add on your desk? Add to this list. Add as something you should maybe substitute something with something, or maybe you see as, um, let's say, a resource you can add so that you can achieve your goal. A resource I can add to achieve my goal. Maybe start working on this. Yeah. Maybe a time to collaborate with people, with experienced people in in this area. Uh, I have two, three, four friends who have, you know, similar businesses back in Egypt. Some of them are online, some of them are physical. So maybe I need to spend some time with these people, uh, getting some of their experience, seeing how things are going on there. Uh, what are the challenges that they face? Um, how the businesses are achieving their expected outcomes, um, you know, learning from them. And then based on this experience, I might build on. What would be then, great Walid, what would be then your first step towards your action plan? My first step, uh, I would say uh, finding the uh, I mean, creating, I would say, creating the right resources that I would use for training in, in my center. So maybe collecting uh, books, websites, you know, I have, I have, you know, uh, quite, you know, a good uh, storage of books and uh, online resources that I often use, but uh, still, I might need to enlarge this. Uh, I might need to build a library of resources that I can use for training, whether I'm going to be the only trainer or, you know, for the other trainers who are going to be uh, part of, of my team. So making sure that they have all the resources that they need to teach and provide quality education. Uh, this is this is the first thing. And this is doesn't need many people. I might be able to do this on my own and might consult some friends. I uh, might need to do a lot of online research and, you know, library checking. So this is this is maybe the, the first thing I need to start with. And I don't think it should take much time. Like uh, within, I think within a month, I can achieve this. Ooh, great, Walid. And um, if ever you be added to that list of resources, apart from books, what kind of other resources can you add that you esteem are necessary towards achieving your goal? I would say that the second would be the uh, the team, the team that I would be working with. Like uh, I have a friend who is interested in in in, uh, in joining this initiative or the project with me. So maybe I need to talk with her, discuss her plans and check if her knowledge, because her knowledge is not actually in language learning, uh, but it's it's more in social skills, training and social skills and business. Uh, so maybe I need to have meeting with her, start working on creating criteria for selection. Who are the teachers who would be part of the program? Uh, 
I need uh, website designers, uh, web developers. I would also need uh, to think of selecting the right place for the project and working on, based on this, I also need to work on the budget. How much do I need and on for how long do I need this budget and then divide this money over the period of time until we start. So uh, yeah, first I would say this, the second thing would be the team and then maybe third will be the budget. All right, great, we need So um, start, let's say, Compared to the beginning of the lesson of this session, the lesson, oh my god, the teacher's here. <laughs> Compared to the beginning of the session, Willid, how close do you think you are from your objective? If we scale this from one to ten, on a scale from one to ten, how close do you esteem you're closer I, to your I would say I would say like 50%. I I frankly speaking, I haven't uh given it this time. Now we have been talking for like 30 minutes, and I haven't been thinking deeply about this project for quite a long time. So it, it's you gave me the opportunity to rethink and start taking actions or, or putting things into uh, uh, into steps. Bravo, Elit. I noticed, you know, from your facial expressions, from your smile, I noticed that uh, you're getting closer to your objective. And um, so, Walid, by we're getting closer to the end of the session. So what did you learn about Walid today? What did Walid learn about Walid um, in today's session? What did I learn about me? Yourself, yes. I'm a good person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. I, I think, yeah. I, I, I believe that um, I, I, I've been so busy that I need to free some time. I need to work on time management more. I need to organize my time more wisely uh, and giving priority to the things that deserve to be on top of my list. Um, and I, I think um, I need to be more a good planner. So thinking and writing and taking notes and starting taking actions that would help me uh, become a better Walid, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Walid. And Walid, what kind of takeaways can you take with you? Just like, you know, um, a piece of cake, a sandwich, something you take away from today's session and that can be useful in your life, in your future, Walid. Uh, that having someone an inspiring person uh, putting you into the direction that you want to be heading is, is very important. It's not just that you want to do something. You sometimes need to discuss it with someone. You sometimes need to listen to, to the people around. You might need to listen to a good coach or a guide to help you see where you're going and start planning for your step. It's uh, it's important to listen and uh, share ideas with those who care and uh, who would definitely be willing to help. Thank you, Ali. Thank you. That's really um, I really appreciate your comments about today's session. And uh, um, I'm always here, you know, as a friend, as a, a coach, if you want to say coach. <laughs> so yes, I'm a coach. So. Um, <laughs> But uh, beyond this, we lead, you know, um, our relationship as uh, uh, colleagues is beyond this. Like it's a partnership. It's um, cool. it's your space, the co-creative space. That's what I said from the beginning. It's like uh, I'll be always here and I'll be very glad to see your project really, uh, you You'll know, be uh, launched. <laughs> Excuse me? Sorry? You'll please. be teaching in the center. <laughs> oh, inshallah. I'm, I'm coming to Egypt. Who knows? Indeed. Who knows? Maybe I'll be relocating to Egypt. <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> so nobody knows. Inshallah. So mm -hmm. Walid, I'm glad that you really, um, we end up the session with uh, good vibes and, um, and and with a clear vision towards, uh, let's say, your project. So, and uh, best wishes and kudos for this mindset 
for this open mindset, really, that you have. Um, is there any question, really, that I forgot to ask you? Maybe you want me to add or maybe talk no, about No, thank it? you. I think you've covered all the topics, uh, Yusra. Thank you very much for your inspiring session. And uh, I would like to also thank you for all the people on the chat folks who keep uh, sending me wishes of achieving my project. Thank you, everyone, and I wish you all good luck. Thank you so much. So with this, Walid, with your permission, of course, we can end up the demonstration of coaching session. Yeah. Thank you Thank so much. you very much. Thanks, Thank you so much. Over to you, our my team and my friends, Linda and uh, Karen. We uh, we finished dealing with with everything. So thank you so much to our colleagues in the chat. Thanks everybody who followed this webinar with us. It was a great pleasure really being here. Thank you. Oh, it was definitely our pleasure. Um, so many, many wonderful comments of what a great session this was and how practical it is for everyone to actually sit in on a coaching session so to get ideas you know about how it actually look what it looks like so i think this was so much appreciated and very much needed um and we really are so thrilled to have had both of you here with us um and i wonder if you have just a few minutes if we have maybe one or two questions from the audience would you have time to yeah. i know it's about time to end but if you could take just a couple of questions that would be wonderful uh sure, so i think okon maybe okon had a question about the person who is on the receiving end so what do you call that person is that uh trainee or <laughs> what is yeah yes according to the icf standards uh the person who's the receiver you know at the other end of the dialogue the conversation is called a client um they no longer call the person a coachee because coaching coachy, it seems like something you know a hierarchical kind of relationship so they stopped really um mentioning that to but they call them clients so it's like a partnership, partnering relationship. So the coach is the person who uh, facilitates and the client is the person who's there to get a service. And thank you. Wonderful, okay. thank you. <laughs> Any other quick questions? Does anyone have a burning question they would like to ask? You can either uh ask go ahead and ask online or you can put it in the chat whatever yes I thank you for reminding us a, of that i was just going to ask a user sorry my voice is a bit rocky and um, you're very professional in what you're doing but it seems that at some point you might begin to drift from that coach to being a mentor a trainer depending on the the kind of clients you are dealing with how do you just ensure that you stay within the coaching framework? Thank you. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, Okan. Uh, did you notice this in me during the session or uh, is your question um, guided towards- No, not at all, not at all. You, you were excellent. You were excellent during the, the demo, <laughs> excellent. But um, as a human yeah. being, and then based on the client's uh, demands, yeah. Yeah. You might begin to drift from being that coach to being a trainer or a mentor. So that's the question I'm trying to I'll where to really you. put that line. Yeah, I'll tell you this. So uh, we practice something. It comes, you know, with experience, with practice. So we practice something called detachment. And the detachment occurs when you place yourself really in that coach mindset and uh, the coach hut, let's say. So first it starts, Okan, with uh, the series of questions. Whenever you notice that you're asking a question, for instance, it, it, why questions that are not really, uh, they, they, they do not fit, it fit into the coaching mindset. No wise questions, because we don't care about the story. We care about the person. So we can gravitate towards all WH questions, except for why. This is one thing. Second thing, all of them, they're open-ended questions. So because it gives the client more, uh, let's say, space for self-discovery. If it's open-ended and uh, the focus is more on values. So uh, have you noticed that I've been asking about um, the family value, the time? Um, so many things here, uh, time management as well. So if you, as 
a coach and you don't want to be dragged into the mentor. So the coach has to make sure he's not transferring his own values because it's not like kind of calculating the same system. I have my belief system and it's not applicable to the same person. So because the other person has a different background. The thing is that you get detached as much as you can. And if you notice even yourself mentioning the word pronoun I, it's kind of gets you more into the mentor and trainer. So no eyes in, um, but real eyes, but no eyes in, in the um, coaching session, more of open-ended questions, no close questions, because it closes up the conversation. So if I'm going to ask a um, uh, yes or no questions, so I won't be giving him enough space to think, to uh, explore the different options. And then uh, more, most of all, the action plan, since the person knows their life better than the coach so that's why the action plan is set by the uh by the client himself or herself did i answer a question okan <laughs> thank you per perfectly well perfectly well i'm so happy because uh, while the session was going on i was playing with the qr code you gave me the yeah. um ai guy and actually i'm already starting to think like well it now of something very important about my life so this is good very luck. good for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please test the, the chatbot. It's still in the initial phase, but please everyone to everybody, to my colleagues test it and I welcome the feedback. So I've trained it only with content relevant to ICF because I'm an ICF coach. So I tend to be aligned with all of that, but please use it as a, a coach and let me see if there are any things that I can fix in that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much again to both of you for this lovely, lovely presentation. We really, as you can see, there are probably oodles more questions to come out of this. Uh, so if we uh, find that, then we will pass those along to you so that you can get more feedback. But wow, this was just great. I think everyone really enjoyed it. And it will be on YouTube channel as Karen has been posting here. Uh, so everyone can, can see it. If you liked it, tell your friends about it and go to our YouTube channel um, to learn more. So thanks to to both of you again. This was absolutely fantastic. Dr. Walid and Yusra, uh, you know, we talked about time and everyone has generously donated their time to the CPD group and, and all of the participants as well on a Sunday to come and, and attend this webinar. So thanks to all of you. I also <laughs> would like to just very quickly, I know we're a little over time, but I would like to quickly thank our CPD team. Um, we have several members here, Karen, Judith, uh, Liz joined us. And uh, a special thanks to Karen for running the tech and making sure that everything ran smoothly. So thank you so much again to everyone. Happy Sunday. And uh, look for our announcements for our next webinar next month. It will be on our Facebook page and on the TESOL page. So and with that, um, I will end the webinar. and. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thanks Thank very you. much, Linda. Bye-bye.